Hey guys, Chris Agos here, actor and voice talent based in Los Angeles. And even though I've been doing this a really long time, I still want to get better. And one of the ways I do that is I pay attention to what talent buyers are putting on air, what reads are winding up in commercials, because those reads are working for somebody. So I want to learn from them. And sometimes when I find a commercial that I think is really, really good, I make a video about it and I break it down line by line and try to figure out what makes it work. And that way I learned something from it and maybe you do too. This time around, I was pretty lucky to catch this commercial. I saw it live as it was broadcast and it was only broadcast once. So stick around, we'll talk about it in a sec. I think it's a real shame that this spot only aired on broadcast TV one time. It might be making the rounds online, but it's such a good spot. It's got a great story, a great message. It is totally on brand for Google Translate. You'll see what I mean in just a second. And the voice talent really is just the icing on the cake. He is so good. He matches up with everything that's going on, the whole package, so well. I don't know who he is. I've searched online. I can't find his name. But if he was here right now, I would shake his hand. His performance is fantastic. So it's a 60. Let's uh, not look at the whole thing that's kind of long. If you want to see the whole thing, I'll post the link below. But for right now, let's just get about 20 seconds of it so we can see what we're dealing with. Hey, Google. More than 100 billion words are translated every day. Lift your hand. Thank you very much for your help. Words about food. Words about friendship. So the first thing I want to talk about is the casting, which I think is really brilliant. This voice talent, as a North American male sitting in the U.S. watching TV, does not sound like a voice I'm used to seeing on my television set. And uh, I think that's what really makes it work. His, uh, his accent is not a North American accent. It's a global accent. He could be from India or Pakistan or Afghanistan. I don't know, but it's different than what I'm used to hearing. And that is actually the thing that got my attention uh, when I was in my living room and the TV was on, but I wasn't really paying attention. I heard his voice come on and I looked up at the TV and I was like, oh, this is new. What is this? So I think the casting is really great. But the second thing that really uh, is interesting about him is his delivery style. Now, Google Translate is uh, an app that we have on our phone. And uh, let's think about this for a second. When you're using the app, you're um, standing in front of someone who doesn't speak your language and you need help from them. So you are in a interaction that requires some uh, kindness, some humanity, uh, some intimacy. And that's what he brings to that read. His projection is so low, it's almost uh, just slightly above a whisper. It's almost like he's like right here next to us, the way he would be if he was like showing us something on his phone. So it's really appropriate. It would not have been appropriate for the story or, or the context of the spot for him to come in with a really loud read. That just wouldn't make sense. So um, I think it's perfect that he's speaking very quietly and very honestly. It lends itself really well to what Google's trying to do with this spot. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to break commercials down into acts. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and so on and so forth. Act 1 is actually pretty uh, short. It's just a short introduction. And, um, you know, the voice talent just sets up uh, the scenario for us. And he does it in a really nice way. More than 100 billion words are translated every day. Lift your hand. Thank you very much for your help. Now, the talent successfully avoided a trap that I know I fall into sometimes, and that's whenever I see big numbers like this in copy, I always want to, like, juice them. I want to give them a little extra attention. Um, he didn't do that. Uh, because that just would have been weird. It would have been a strange way to kind of uh, launch this very quiet, intimate read. So he takes that 100 billion number and just treats it like any other number. There's a little maybe something special to it because it is such a huge number. But on the whole, he's just giving us some facts. More than 100 billion words are translated every day. Now in Act 2, the copywriting um, does something that can be tricky for a lot of voice talent. The, the writing actually turns out to be 
pretty much a laundry list of nouns. Um, and all of them are kind of the same, but they're all also kind of different at the same time. Let's listen. Words about food. <laughs> Words about friendship. About sport. About belief. About fear. So the trick is when you have a laundry list like this, you uh, have to do two things at the same time. You have to uh, give each of them the level of attention that they deserve and put them in the right context given the visuals and also where they belong in the larger story. But you also have to um, look at the big picture and treat the entire list like as one thing. So you don't want to get lost in the weeds and like uh, give all kinds of special attention to one item on the list. But you also don't want to bore the viewer uh, and or the listener with um, by reading it literally like your grocery list. What we need is something a little special on each of those items. So let's see how he deals with each one of them. Words about food. Words about food. He uses an upward inflection, and that lets us know that there's more to come, that this is the beginning of a list. Great. Words about friendship. So with friendship, his tone of voice and his pitch actually goes up a little bit from where he was on food. It's a little lighter. So that's the little special sauce that tells the viewer that in the context of this world, friendship is a little bit more special, maybe a little bit more important than food was. About sport. Now, the one about sport is really interesting because he drops back down and he doesn't give us an upward inflection to let us know there's more coming or a downward inflection to let us know that's the end of the list. He kind of keeps it pretty even. It's kind of flat about sport. And that lets us know that there might be something coming, but for me at least, sport out of this entire list is probably the least important one. And that's why it's right there in the middle. About belief about fear. And then in the next one about belief, he lightens up again and he um, almost modestly says belief, you know, and he lets us know that there's more to come. Um, but it is a little bit different. It's dramatically different than sport, the one that just preceded it. Um, and we're kind of back in that sort of friendly, uh, uh, lighter range that we were in with friendship. Now, the one about fear that's really interesting. This is his first downward inflection. It's the first time that he's saying with his delivery, pay attention to this. This is important. About fear. He's acknowledging it. He's, he's saying, yes, there's fear. But we don't want to pay too much uh, attention to that. We don't want to dwell too much on that. And that feeling, that um, notion of not dwelling on something negative is carried over into the other two items, the next two items on the list. Let's listen. Oh my God. Words that can hurt and sometimes divide. Words that can hurt and divide. Two dramatically different things with dramatically different implications and characteristics than the first few items on our list. Those are negative things. And in general, commercials are happy land, right? Everybody's happy. Everybody's enjoying themselves, enjoying life because, you know, advertisers want to associate happiness with their product. That's a good thing. But in this case, we've got something that is an acknowledgement of uh, the bad things that exist in the world. And uh, what the voice talent does is he puts a positive spin on it. I mean, we could put any words in that inflection and we would think that it's a positive thing, but he's talking about words that can hurt. That's a genius move because the visuals are doing the work in this segment. Um, negativity is not something we ever want to emphasize. We don't want to drive the point home that this is a negative moment. We want to lighten it up. So he does a beautiful job of that here. Um, words that can hurt and the next item in the list, which is the final item, by the way, uh, and divide. And he brings it down with a downward inflection to let us know that the list is over. Um, but he also just doesn't hammer us with this negativity uh, because words that, are, uh, that cause division are bad. And sometimes divide. So that brings us to Act 3 of the spot where we leave the negativity behind and we're solidly, firmly in positive territory. We've got a lot of smiling faces. We got some fist bumps. The copy tells us that the most translated words in the world are, um, are positive ones, happy ones, things that are redeeming. So 
A lot of spots have emotional peaks and valleys written into them. And if the uh, emotional valley of the spot was that negativity that we saw at the end of Act 2, we are very rapidly climbing towards the emotional peak of the spot towards the end here. Um, and the voice talent really knows this. And he doesn't try to do too much with it, but he does one very special thing, one trick that's, I hate to call it a trick, but it kind of is, that really, really works. Let's play out the rest of the spot. But every day, the most translated words in the world are, how are you? Thank you. And I love you. So did you catch what happened at the end? Nothing. The creatives, the writers, actually cut the voiceover short by about 12 seconds. So for the last 12 seconds of this 60, an eternity, there is no voice talent. There's no audible wrapping up of the story. Uh, and what's more, they give him a laundry list to finish out the spot, another list, uh, the list of the phrases. And the very last phrase is probably the most important one to any human being ever. I love you. Listen to how the voice talent handles it. And I love you. It's the last item in a list, and he doesn't bring a downward inflection. He uses an upward inflection. It just kind of hangs there. And I love you. That's telling us that there's more to come. Upward inflections do that. They create anticipation. So what they did was they used I love you and that upward inflection to make us watch for the rest of the story. It glued our eyes to the screen because we wanted to see what was coming next. We wanted to hear what was coming next, but we never get that. The resolution comes visually, and that's a brilliant move. I think the whole package really worked well with this spot. Um, it was a great story, great message, great voice talent, uh, pairing with the visuals. Uh, really well done by everybody all around. Hope you learned something. I know I did. Um, we'll see you next time.